Hello, hello, my name is Max, and I'll give a talk on Riemannian optimization on DataFest. The talk will consist of three videos. The first video will be about connections of traditional optimization and Riemannian optimization without very much details. The next video will be in depth introduction with mathematics in what is Riemannian optimization and how is it connected with the real world. The last video will be the going through the code of Geoopt to implement Riemannian optimization in PyTorch. Let's go ahead. So, why do you need Riemannian optimization and how you can use it in your, in your work? And we all use optimizers like Adam, SGD, Adam W, IMS Grad, whatever, without proper understanding of how they are working. And of course, there are some papers that describe the details of the implementation and their open source libraries, but we don't really need to care about how it's working. And the same goes with human optimization. You only need some a well-defined task where this Riemann optimization is applicable and without proper understanding of why is it working, you can use already implemented algorithms in open source libraries and there is no problem in doing that. If you don't want to listen to a lot of mathematics and want to just use the code to run your examples and improve your models, or maybe you're already familiar with Riemannian optimization, and that's wonderful. Then you can go to GitHub repository Geoopt, that is an open source library on Riemannian optimization, and it offers you a lot of possibilities you can use uh, in PyTorch and build it in your favorite model or framework for running experiments. However, if you want some math, then welcome, we'll go ahead. So, when do we need Riemannian optimization? Um, the first thing you might think is uh, the constraint problem. And what type of constraint is uh, actually useful to consider when we choose between uh, projective optimization or Riemannian optimization? For projective optimization, you can use whatever constraints, but for Riemannian optimization, your constraint has, should have some structure. And uh, in this case, the structure is uh, the smoothness of uh, the constraint. Like uh, on Sphere, uh, we have uh, the smooth surface. Or it might be like some matrix, matrix manifold, and uh, you might want to relax the problem. For example, the famous uh, matrix manifold might be uh, orthogonal matrix or uh, sim probability simplex or it might be the matrix uh, that is doubly stochastic and uh, that is used to match key points and uh, all these uh, examples can be unified uh, in terms of Riemannian optimization uh, the sphere uh, the orthogonal matrix and the uh, Bikov polytope that is uh, this doubly stochastic matrix manifold and and many others so you, you can't actually enumerate them but uh, they all have uh, smooth constraints and uh, it's uh, very useful to apply proper methods that take it in account traditional optimization tools uh, that uh, use projective gradients uh, don't really uh, use adaptive term in full in full power but uh, when you use uh, Riemann optimization and you have a predefined structure, you can use these adaptive methods to their full power because you can compute this adaptive term uh, in closed form. Uh, you know how to update it and so on. Another intriguing example that is probably mm, not achievable with projective gradient uh, or other methods is uh, HMC with constraints. So for example, you might want to use uh, MCMC methods on matrix manifolds. 
Dublis Tehastik mums tas jūs, o šitie filmi mani fort, o sfie, un so on, un you have your probabilistic model, and you want to create posterior samples out of this model, and traditional tools don't offer this possibility, but in Riemann optimization tools you can build your HMC algorithm quite easily, and run uh, posterior sampling and that's actually great and uh, already used in several research papers what else we can use besides reminding optimization for example you can use the reparameterization and that's a quite useful approach when you can express your constraint parameters uh, from unconstrained domain another thing is projection like on the picture on the right when you project to the unnormalized vector to its normalized version and these two approaches uh, differ uh, in terms of uh, adaptive term really makes sense uh, only when you do reparameterization because you don't remove the degree of freedom um, in this case also you can use hmc and uh, this is Quite a nice approach if you can do that. If you can't and you use projection, then adaptive term doesn't really make sense because uh, uh, the degree of freedom is incorporated uh, in your adaptive term on unconstrained domain. And this projection may be hard to differentiate through, like on Big of Polytope, you run synchronous iterations and so on. So this is quite problematic. So let's look at uh, IMS Gradin RM. And IMS Grad is a bit improved version of Adam. But it, on this example, we can really see everything that we need to consider when uh, building any algorithm that has adaptive terms, that has momentums, and uh, other things. So let's start. Of course, we have a function that is differentiable and we assume that it's possible to compute its gradient. After the gradient, uh, we should take care of momentum. So we combine uh, gradients accumulated from previous iterations with this new gradient. Uh, in this case, it's uh, just exponential averaging. The next thing is adaptive term. And for adaptive term in Rn, we use uh, uh, second moment of uh, the gradient to scale gradients properly so they don't explode and uh, the most promising directions are uh, valued more. And the final gradient step. And that's all fine. Uh, but let's go to Riemannian optimization and uh, Riemannian version of IMS Grad. Without going into details, it all looks very similar. We have the same uh, gradient, but in the case of in the second case, it's Riemannian gradient. We'll talk about it later. Um, similarly, we should combine moments accumulated from previous iterations, but there will be a problem, and you see it's the in the end, we should take care of uh, momentum for a number of reasons. Adaptive terms are also computed similarly, but now the adaptive term is dependent on the point you stand. And the optimization step. In this case, exponential map is used. And exponential map is uh, similar to what is going on when we move the point towards the most promising direction but we do it smoothly after this walkthrough there were some missing points so we don't uh, talk in detail for example uh, how to work with gradients because gradient and the point uh, it's very different they're different creatures uh, something is direction another is uh, location and uh, how do we combine them? Why do we 
use summation or subtraction in our n case. Uh, the next thing is uh, the computations that depend on uh, actual points. For example, the adaptive term is computed depending on the point we're standing on. And the reason why is it so is uh, vaguer, because in Rn we didn't really care, we just computed second norm. Uh, the momentum, as we remember from Euclidean optimization, uh, we just uh, accumulate gradients, uh, do exponential averaging, and that's it. And in Riemannian optimization, there was an additional operation to move our momentums to the next points and what, why is it for, uh, and so on. And the final update, uh, why can't we use summation or subtraction or whatever operation? Why do we need uh, the additional function, exponential map? So these questions are uh, the core questions to do uh, research in a uh, field of Riemannian optimization and uh, have a better understanding of what's going on. And in the next video, we'll review it in very detail.